I'm Paul Levinson, and welcome to Light On, Light Through, episode 162, a review of the Blumhouse Horror Quartet. Well, Blumhouse, which has been in business, I don't know, at least about 10 years, has recently put up on Amazon Prime Video a quartet or four horror movies. The Lie, Black Box, Evil Eye, hey, that rhymes with The Lie, and Nocturne. So I thought I'd provide a review of all four of them. Let's start with The Lie. It's a scalding little movie, and it's from the brain behind the killing. That was a great series. Her name is Vina Sood. And it has one of the killing's big stars, Muriel Enos. Now, first, let me say that the lie wasn't really horror. It's straight-up crime. But that's okay. Sometimes crimes seem like they're horror. Let me also say that I did guess the big shocking reveal at the end. I foresaw that about halfway through the movie. Now, the reason I realized that was twofold. One, we didn't see Brittany actually being pushed to her death. And two, Brittany's body wasn't recovered. And although the current was swift, the water didn't look particularly deep. By the way, there'll be spoilers in all of these reviews, just so you have fair warning. But speaking of spoilers, guessing that ending didn't in the least spoil my enjoyment of The Lie, which grabs you by your collar as soon as Jay hears his daughter Kayla cry out and keeps you there for the next 90 minutes. And the acting is really impressive, with a typically brilliant performance by Enos across a simmering and wild range of emotions. Joey King as Kayla was also noteworthy, Her acting was, in effect, a double meta performance. She has to act to her parents as if she did shove Brittany to her death, and she has to pretend just the opposite to the police, that nothing untoward happened. And then the big reveal that she and Brittany were putting this whole thing on, well, we need to believe after that that Kayla was acting about everything she said before. But I believed it, and so did my wife. If you've listened this far through the worn spoilers, you've already seen the lie. If somehow you haven't, it's well worth seeing. Let's get to Black Box next. Immortality via uploaded minds into computer systems has been a staple of science fiction for decades, and it's rarely been done as well on the screen as it is in Black Box, which has been on Amazon Prime Video since October. Nolan's having trouble recovering his memories after surviving a severe car accident, which apparently initially left him brain dead. That's a start for this kind of narrative we've also seen many times before, but Black Box becomes memorable in the almost delicate, compassionate subtlety with which Nolan struggles to regain his self and the traumatic and heartwarming surprises that await him. The more specific problem for Nolan is he's recovering not only his memories, but even more of someone else's. So he goes to a specialist, Lillian, who's very understanding. And she puts him through various procedures, hypnosis, connections to arcane devices. And we learn the hard way, or Nolan learns the hard way, that Lillian has actually downloaded another mind into his body, the mind of Lillian St. Thomas, who died a few months earlier. 
Lillian uploaded his mind before he died, and she hopes to bring her son back to life, or his mind back to life, in Nolan's brain and body. Well, I've already given away too much of the story, so I won't say anything more specifically, but I did like the way Nolan, who retains some of his memories, along with Thomas's, tries to work things out, as does Thomas in Nolan's body as well. There's an old Yiddish saying, with one tochus, you can't dance at two weddings. Black Box is, in effect, a story of, with one body, you can't do the dance of life with two minds. I think the Yiddish saying is a little sharper. Anyway, this was very well acted by Mamadou Athey as Nolan, Amanda Christine as his precocious daughter Ava, and it was good to see Felicia Richard on the screen as Lillian. A fine story by Stephen Herman and directing by Emmanuel Ose Kufar. Highly recommended. Next up, Evil Eye. Reincarnation across continents. Do you believe in reincarnation? Or if not, are you open to accepting it as a premise for a taut, slow-burning family thriller that builds up to a clutch-by-the-throat ending? If yes, you're in for a rewarding 90 minutes with the evil eye. So, I have to say, that was the third movie in the Blumhouse Quartet that my wife and I saw on as many nights. And, wow, these movies are really good. And this, so far, was the most horror of the four movies, although I'll get to Nocturne, the fourth movie, next. But if horror is your cup of strange tea, come and get it. Well, here is the setup for Evil Eye. Usha in India is worried that her daughter Pallavi in the U.S. is 29 and not yet married. That may soon be corrected, though, when she meets a cool, well-spoken, good-looking guy. But Usha back in India, has increasing misgivings, which we eventually learn stem from her being attacked on a bridge when she was pregnant with Pallavi by a 10 years former boyfriend many years ago. Now, we should survive the attack by pushing her former boyfriend off the bridge. The question is, has he come back to life in America? transcending space as well as time in the body of Sandeep, Palave's suave boyfriend, to exact some kind of revenge all these years later on Usha. Okay, that's all I'll tell you about the story. I will say that it's fleshed out by a family of appealing characters, including Usha's husband, Krishnan, a man of science and therefore not a believer in reincarnation, and good job by Bernard White, whom you may have seen on Homeland, Pallavi, well played by Sunita Mani, who of course doesn't at first believe in reincarnation either, and Usha, played by Sarita Chowdhury, every bit as impressive as when we first saw her on the screen with Denzel Washington in Mississippi Masala way back in 1991. That was a great movie. Evil Eye is written by Madhuri Shekhar, directed by Ilan Dasani and Rajiv Dasani. And it's a narrative that serves up an appealing blend of Indian and American flavor with ancient belief in a story that would have fit well in any issue of the late lamented Weird Tales. And the fourth movie in the quartet is called Nocturne. And, wow, 
That was a pretty powerful movie as well. And by the way, I also should mention that the Blumhouse movies on Amazon Prime are part of a larger series that will continue with four new movies in 2021. So, Nocturne was indeed a horror movie with the additional depth of being situated in music. The story is about two fraternal twins, Juliet and Vivian, who are high school piano virtuosos and in constant fraternal competition. Well, Vivian's a virtuoso on her way to Juilliard. Juliet has problems expressing her talent. Fortunately, or of course, maybe not, Juliet discovers a notebook with strange scribblings and depictions. Will these help her find her confidence and showcase her talent? I'll say no more except the sibling rivalry intensifies. Affairs and almost affairs with boyfriends and teachers ensue and the music is beautiful and haunting. The acting is fine too especially Sidney Sweeney as Juliet. She did a really good job in this role. And it was good to see Dexter's Julie Benz as the twins' mother. The ending was somewhat predictable, but it was effectively rendered, and I thought the real strength of Nocturne was not in the plot per se, but in the way the parts of this inevitable story were played out. Applause for Zoo Kirk, who wrote and directed this. So, I'm all set for the next Blumhouse Quartet next year. And in a way, the more I think about these movies, the more they look like a 21st century streaming Twilight Zone, except with longer episodes. The Light on Light Through podcast. Well, I hope you enjoyed that review of these four Blumhouse horror movies. By the way, I want to say hello to listeners of this podcast in India on the Ghana app. I saw about a month ago that Light On, Light Through, the name of this podcast, was being sent to India. I was very glad to see that on the Ghana system. So I hope you've been enjoying these episodes, and I hope you enjoy this episode in particular and my review of Evil Eye, which, as I mentioned, is situated, half or more of it at least, in India. So it's getting close to the end of the year. I'll try to be back with an episode or two before the year ends. One way or another, I'll be back soon with another episode of Light On, Light Through. Stay safe and healthy, and enjoy. Athens, 2042 AD. She ripped the paper in half, then ripped the halves, then ripped what was left, again, into bits and pieces of history that could have been. Sierra Waters had read once that, years ago, it was thought that men made love for the thrill, while women made love for the sense of connection it gave them. Curled up with a good book says, Sierra Waters is sexy as hell. You can find out more about The Plot to Save Socrates by Paul Levinson at theplottosavesocrates.com. about an ancient biotech war raging on in secret for centuries.